Shadow the Light 13, Alice the Golem's entry. Recently, I learned that my creator, Thomas, had traveled to Earth and guided the departed souls of Shanann Razuchek and her three young children, Celeste, Bella, and Nico, guided them all to heaven. I say Shanann Razuchek and not Shanann Watts to bring honor to the Razuk family who honor her and her children to this day as heroes of God. Hopefully the mention of their names shall help remind the faithful that the father's greatest gift, the gift of children and family, can be snatched away at any moment, a priceless gift Satan's possessed followers seek to steal in a bout of demon-fueled rage or forked-tongued deception. To help the faithful on the world of shadow light maintain their family-driven communities, Thomas bestowed upon me God's power of illusion to help me deceive the followers of Satan, for the only way to fight fire is with fire. I wear the illusion you see before you of Shanann as she appears as a teenager on the world of shadow light. I also wear a powerfully enchanted short bow you cannot see slung over my shoulder. A doe skin quiver of arrows holds my enchanted arrows capable of cauterizing the fatal wounds they inflict on evildoers, but my arrows are incapable of harming children or those with childlike loyalty and faith in God, called the creator on shadow light. During the journal entries known as shadow light 11 and 12, you were introduced to my ally Brog, his twin brother, and Wagen, along with the evil Captain Menden and the teenage barkeep within the Golden Mug Tavern, who is also the sister of the Shannon of Shadowlight. My friendship with the two sisters is as indestructible as three links of thick steel fastened around the shared purpose of keeping the town's children innocent by eradicating the town's dishonestly deceptive leaders. In Shadowlight Journal Entry 12, the evil Captain Menden had written of the recent mystery of discovering his dead niece in the street outside of the Golden Mug Tavern. He suspected my allies had slain her when in fact I had proudly slain that demented necromancer, a vile pleasure seeker of the flesh, who made undead golem soldiers out of her many lovers once they all eventually, inevitably failed to please her. Currently I race to keep pace with that now dead young woman's equally vile manipulator of the weak-minded Captain Menden. I managed to remain unseen in the shadows of the sun's ivory light. Two armored undead golems managed to remain close behind Captain Menden, guarding the captain's back, while the foul soul raced towards the council building. Swiftly, I followed Captain Menden as he nervously led his two golem protectors down a narrow alleyway, aligned with richly built two-story stone homes in an affluent area of border town, dangerously close to the council building. I am close to Captain Menden. Should I kill him now? I telepathically asked Thomas, my adopted father in a sense who I felt more connected with than if I had been a human and he had been my birth father. I heard Thomas's deep and calm voice speak reassuringly within my mind. I shall not fault you if you decide not to slay him, Alice. Momentarily, I plan on exposing Menden's immediate threat to Braun, Brog, and Wagen, who are near the council building already. Then our allies shall then do as they must and end Menden's life before that serpent of Satan can threaten their own lives with fork-tongued lies. Nay, I inspired Menden to plot against my allies. I bear the responsibility of stopping on the head of this snake, I whispered aloud as I stalked closer towards the trio undetected still. I managed to come within 40 yards of them before the undead golems, with their ability to detect all life forms, all of which they despised as unliving things, except for their master, Menden. I stared into the eyes of the unliving, that now glowed with a baleful crimson light behind within their visor helms. Reaching backward, I grabbed an enchanted arrow from my quiver, fired it swiftly, then retrieved another magical barb and let it sail in the same instant. Two flaming, crackling arrows struck the golem's helm simultaneously, as the wicked things attempted to raise the two blades each of them wielded defensively, both undead golems failing miserably to intercept my two flaming arrows. The existence of those two already unliving, soulless things ended before either of them realized they had been destroyed, as their large, armored bodies bounced one time with a resounding crash upon the alley stone floor. I fired two more arrows cleanly through Menden's heart, showing him mercy the narcissistic captain would never have shown Braun, Brog, Wagen, or the tavern patrons he planned on falsely accusing of murder. Menden fantasied of watching the eight innocent men strangled to death in a deliberately botched public execution.